Among other notables, the 1980s and the 1990s gave us the first woman appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court, the loss of the Challenger space shuttle, Hong Kong's return to China, and of course the collapse of the Soviet Union and the corresponding fragmentation of what had been a closed and highly centralized society. With the advent of the personal computer, dramatic changes were also occurring in the high-tech industry. The Windows operating system, along with Unix, began to be adopted as an alternative server solution to the mainframe. In fact, some were saying the mainframe's days were numbered. We are gathered here today to pay our last respects to our beloved mainframe. The mainframe has been pronounced dead uh, more times than Abe Vigoda, for crying out loud. It was a tough time uh, trying to convince people, number one, that you should continue to invest in a mainframe. Mainframes weren't flexible enough. People would come in and say, I need an application change. I need a new application. And we had backlogs. We said, well, maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get to your requirement, but it's going to be in another two years. And people went off and kind of said, well, that's not good enough. I need to do something, and I need to do it now. The big push in the 80s was to move to distributed systems. There was a belief that these computers would be able to take over for a mainframe and do the mainframe's job. Because the press, the analysts, and users jumped on this distributed computing idea, the future of the mainframe looked awfully dim. You had uh, a lot of companies don't exist anymore, those who were sort of anti-mainframe, and, and uh, I think they went a little over the top in trying to suggest that they were going to fix all the problems of mainframe computing. The 90s were very perilous for the mainframe. Analysts and technology pundits uh, thought that the mainframe was going to die. They uh, thought that client server was the way to go. It gave the flexibility that people needed to get systems in very quickly. So the mainframe suffered quite a bit at the higher levels. There was a guy in 1991, one of the hotshot IT analysts. He said the last mainframe would be unplugged on March 15th, 1996. That's almost 15 years ago, and today 50 of the top 50 banks use IBM mainframe computer systems. 24 of the top 27 retailers use IBM mainframe systems. Why do they do that? It's because the mainframe is the most reliable, the most available, and the most secure platform. A computing system is secure if you can rely on it to behave in the manner you expect it to. Now, that is the beauty of the mainframe. There's an old saying that housework is something that nobody notices unless you don't do it. You know, it's kind of funny the mainframe's kind of like that, that people don't notice the mainframe because of the fact that it's just sitting there working behind the scenes. The business requirements keep getting stronger and stronger every year for things like data security, data integrity, being able to report these things. The Intel, Windows, or even the Lintel world um, has a lot of strengths you know, in the fact that you can buy a lot of things. You, know, you can pretty much buy anything you want from any, any vendor. But the bottom line is, is that when the ecosystem is that broad, making those things work together in a very effective way is harder. Many distributed servers would be needed in order to do a single job where it could be done much more conveniently, uh, efficiently, and in a controllable manner if it was done on, on a mainframe system because the mainframe system could do the whole job all on one, in one place. In our recent survey, 75% of CIOs are undergoing some level of recentralization not just the mainframes, they're, they're re-centralizing on many different platforms, but that's certainly a good sign for mainframes. I think some of that, that proliferation that occurred, that, that server sprawl that's out there today, is now being fixed. I don't see the 80s and 90s as dark ages at all. I see it as a, a period of growth, expansion, and response to a, a challenger that came in the form of distributed computing. The 80s are usually remembered as the time when, when PCs showed up, and that kind of would make you think that the mainframes faded, but they didn't really start fading then at all. They were, they were, they were expanding very, very rapidly. IBM pushed into areas they had not been before, uh, both into smaller companies and larger companies. Amdahl 
Uh, eventually Hitachi Fujitsu was a real expansion of the mainframe. With the 90s, uh, uh, something a little bit different started happening. The mainframes uh, continued to grow in presence and, and they, were, they remained extremely important, but uh, increasingly uh, Big production workloads could be done on other platforms. And by the end, with of course the introduction of the internet and the fact that the mainframe initially didn't play very well in that world, by the end of the 90s there was a real you know, thought that the, that the mainframes were going to go away, that they were going to become obsolete and just, and just go away eventually. But uh, of course that didn't happen. Distributed computing did not signal the demise of the mainframe. In fact, as the 21st century began and the internet and global commerce exponentially expanded, qualities such as security, reliability, and manageability were becoming increasingly valuable. Qualities that positioned the mainframe for a renaissance in the decades to come.